In their discussions of the craft of writing, Stephen King and Roy Lamb both place an emphasis on the importance of revising and rewriting as crucial parts of the writing process. For King, revising his writing is analogous to the final work of excavating fossils. The clods of dead earth have to be scraped away, and the corrosion needs to be polished off before the bones can be seen in their true form. For Lamb, revision is an opportunity for the writers in his workshop to come closer to expressing their true voices. Looking at both writers together, we can identify at least five strategies that successful writers practice. 1. The most specific piece of advice provided in King's book is a formula scribbled onto the bottom of one of his rejected drafts by an editor. Second draft equals first draft minus 10%. An effective revision is likely to be shorter, not longer, than the original draft. King recommends Elmore Leonard's advice in this regard. Leave out the boring parts. Trimming down your essay is also a good opportunity to follow King's advice about hunting out and eliminating pointless adjectives and writerly flourishes. The revision of King's basketball article that appears in subchapter 20 of the CB chapter, and the revision of his hotel story in the book's appendix, both provide excellent illustrations of how to slash dead weight out of a piece of writing. 2. In subchapter 11 of King's chapter on writing, King recommends that every writer go through two drafts, the one you do with the study door closed, and the one you do with it open. Writing for yourself as the sole audience is a powerful and perhaps necessary strategy for expressing yourself without self-censorship. But writing is also an inherently social act, so there is a point when a writer needs to pivot from working in a vacuum to thinking about how her writing will sound to an outside observer. Later on in this subchapter, King recommends identifying your ideal reader. Your IR might be a real person, or it might be a hypothetical reader out there who understands just what it is you're trying to express. Either way, revising your writing from the point of view of this ideal reader will make your writing more likely to connect with your target audience. Three. In the third note to his revised manuscript of The Hotel Story, King explains that he cut several lines from his draft because, quote, I'm doing a lot of the reader's thinking for him here, unquote. In narrative writing, the golden rule is always show, don't tell. Simply describing what a reader should see is almost always more engaging than explaining what you want her to know. As you revise your story, scan for sentences where you can replace telling, Bob was mad, with showing, Bob slammed his fist on the table. Four. In Lamb's account of his work with the incarcerated writers, he introduces Bonnie Forshaw, a workshop attendee whose stilted, mannered writing style belied her personal vitality. Lamb says that Forshaw's writing sounded like it came right out of the Old Testament, and he compares Forshaw to another woman who wrote in the style of the Alcoholics Anonymous manual. The turning point in Forshaw's writing came when Lamb, using Forshaw's own colorful vocabulary, advised her to stop preaching and conversate. Lamb goes on to express the paradoxical principle that the more a writer speaks in her own voice, the more universal she sounds. Revise your writing with an ear for authenticity. Are you being sincere at every step of the way, or are you playing a role? Stamp out phoniness and posing. The closer you come to telling the truth, the more meaningful your writing will be as a tool for self-understanding, and the more likely your writing will be to resonate with other readers. 5. Lamb also describes the case of Carolyn Adams, who wrote two drafts of her story about being arrested. The first draft describes the experience in predictably melodramatic terms with tears, hateful looks, and robotic dehumanization. In the second draft, however, Adams replaces this stereotyped approach with a completely different angle. In her revised draft, she focuses on a goose that she can see outside the window of her holding cell. The outlandishness of this apparition more effectively captures the pain and absurdity of her situation than a hundred pages of tears ever could. There are a number of reasons why the goose draft is superior to the crying, crying, crying draft, and speculating about them can help us articulate the difference between writing that is vivid, individual, and memorable on one hand, and writing that is drab, stereotypical, and forgettable on the other. As you revise your own writing, think about what geese are wallowing around the periphery of your narratives.